The Vocal Notes project studies ambiguities in transcriptions of vocal performances. It is a cross-cultural, interdisciplinary project conducted by research teams from around the world. Now, let me tell you a bit more about our methodology and our ways of working. Here are our main principles. We transcribe real-life performances. Disagreements are not errors. Uh, we produce independent transcriptions by cultural experts. The teams are led by ethnomusicologists. Uh, we do not limit our transcriptions to any temperament or any metrical structure. We systematically explore contexts leading to disagreements. Here is a plan for our phase one. It's now June 2022. We are about six months into the project. The teams have mainly finished their transcriptions and some have started the evaluation process. The teams consist of uh, culture experts, at least two of them. You need at least two transcriptions to compare. We have some teams uh, of three. We agreed on 10 minutes audio for each of the teams so that it is viable to transcribe but also has some diversity in it. The instruction was for the teams to include recordings that you would transcribe anyway for your work, but then to state clearly what the goals of your research and the aims of the transcription are. Obtaining permissions to publish the data set. From the very beginning of our project, we were clear that we want to publish um, the recordings and our transcriptions of them for application and for, for follow-up research. So our target audience are uh, researchers in various disciplines. Yet uh, the attitude to ethical and legal considerations in those disciplines uh, are very different. For example, ethnomusicologists are very aware of all the actors involved in creating a recording. They usually follow up uh, a particular tradition uh, over a long period of time and are often in contact with these actors. Whereas uh, computer scientists work with large amounts of data coming from different sources and there is no way they can attend to each right of each actor that would render their work impossible. Music psychologists have their own uh, view of ethical considerations, so we had to navigate that maze. We have considered many pros and cons of publishing the audio recordings. I can report that the teams had very different experiences with it. For example, some of us are working in an archive and they are very aware of what they can publish and under what conditions. Many of us have used our own field recordings. One team limited themselves to recent recordings by, a sing by singers they are in contact with so that they can actually ask them for permission. Another team recorded uh, the performances themselves. Yet at another team, we had a conflict between two institutions because of the data. So the team reverted to using uh, only commercially released recordings. I would like to share with you the experience of the Russian team. There's this tradition in uh, Russian folklore research, particularly among the older generation of researchers, but also among archives, uh, that uh, the recordings are shared very reluctantly. You should go to the field yourself and record if you want to use the recordings. Um, for almost all of the 22 songs that we are planning to use for the project, we received oral permission from various parties. Uh, we also prepared um, a legal a document for people to sign. Uh, and then the war in Ukraine started. And it became clear to us that we will never receive any written permission to use the recordings of Russian traditional singing for any Western project. So we were faced with the decision either to withdraw from the project or to continue and have a very good justification why we're using and publishing the recordings without receiving a permission to do so. We have looked through literature um, in search of similar cases 
we haven't found any. If you have any pointers for us, we would be super grateful. Now we're coming to the heart of our work, the transcription. We chose recordings uh, of a cappella solo singing uh, mainly for our data sets for the reason that uh, automatic estimation of fundamental frequency curve works very well for this use case. Here's an example. We didn't encounter any problems uh, with the fundamental frequency curve or pitch chase as we call it in uh, our pilot project. But uh, when several teams were working on a large amount of diverse material, we did find um, some problems with the automatic methods. Here's an example. This is a Russian lament, um, and you can see that it goes over four octaves here, which is suspicious for a voice. And also we can see here, for example, uh, in uh, the waveform, there is phonation, but uh, no pitch, no pitch trace. It turns out that this bit is an octave arrow, which is easily corrected. Uh, and this bit here, uh, it is spoken, half spoken, you would say. So we could say we, we can hear pitch in there, but the algorithm uh, doesn't cope with it. It's just a mess. It is important to stress that uh, these um, errors were a tiny fraction of all the audio that uh, we are using in the project. And for most teams, um, they didn't encounter any uh, substantial problems. The uh, Yodel team did see quite a lot of uh, octave errors, which they could easily correct. Um, the Russian team that used um, multi-channel recordings uh, where other voices are heard in the recording in the background uh, had to clean them up from those remnants. Um, the Jewish team did see a number of problems uh, because they have quite a lot of uh, spoken or half-spoken material in their chants. Now coming to the segmentation. There are lots of different considerations when you start to reflect about where exactly you put the beginning of the note. For example, whether um, the syllable starts with a consonant, whether there is a glide at the start or maybe a breath, uh, I will give you a very quick run through of the segmentation process in Tony, um, where you first choose the context, then you narrow it down, then you create a draft of the notes, and then you can correct them. The main principles are that the segmentation is done independently by the transcribers. They, they do it manually from scratch. Tony can suggest uh, uh, segmentation automatically. We didn't use those suggestions. We got rid of them from the start of the project in order not to be biased by them. The instruction was to rely on the researcher's perception. Uh, so where you hear the beginning of the note, there you notate it. Then there were several considerations where we noticed how the tool affects our perception. Firstly, at the very beginning of the project, 
we agreed that we are going to use the visual representation of the fundamental frequency curve uh, in our project because that definitely affects how you notate your notes. But we decided to control it in the way that everyone uses it in the same way. Um, other factors are how many times you have listened to the context, uh, whether you have slowed down the audio. We try not to use this letter one, only in situations where it's otherwise impossible to transcribe. And also the notes sonification sound does make a difference. When you create a segment in Tony, its pitch is automatically determined as a median of the pitch curve. This assumption works well in many cases, but not always, particularly for singing. Uh, and because it is not saved in Tony, we could not correct it there. So we had to move to Sonic Visualizer where we could uh, correct the pitch of the notes. I'll give an example how I correct note pitch in Sonic Visualizer for a fragment where, at least to my ear, the automatically determined medians of the pitch curve are not correct. I use various combinations of um, sonification um, to investigate my perception, and then I correct the notes and listen to them again. Main principles. This work is done independently, meaning that transcribers do not discuss it between them. In contrast to the segmentation, here we are not doing it from scratch, but we are correcting the algorithm's suggestions. This is biased because uh, you would only make a correction in the case where the note pitch is totally wrong. Otherwise, you would leave the suggestion there, meaning that we have exact agreement in many more cases. Um, also, for this particular task, Sonic Visualizer is much less responsive and convenient than Tony is for segmentation. So I would take the results of this stage of our research with a pinch of salt. There was one thing that really puzzled us. We noticed that the context that you choose to listen to the note you're correcting is crucial. If you listen to one note, or maybe to a very small context of two or three notes, then the sonification sounds perfectly fine. When you go to a wider context of a phrase or maybe two or three phrases, then suddenly it all starts to be out of tune. That made this work very difficult. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we think something really interesting is happening there. So we hope that music psychologists will pay attention. Coming to the evaluation, we haven't yet discussed the quantitative analysis in the project. Here's an example of uh, our quantitative evaluation from uh, the pilot project, uh, where you can see some MIR measures calculated for the songs, which can give a number to the agreement between transcribers. Yet the most exciting and uh, the main research part of our project is the qualitative analysis of disagreements, where each transcriber will compare their transcription to the others in the team, would uh, go systematically through them and look for patterns. This will be done independently by each team member. After that, each team will come together and compare their notes and uh, decide about 
the patterns of disagreement within their tradition. When that happened, we will come together as a project, all of our teams, and we'll uh, explore whether there is any basis for a cross-cultural synthesis, whether we found similar things or maybe very different, maybe some of them are similar and others are culturally specific. We have no idea what we will find. This is an exploratory project. The Vocal Notes project analyzes ethnomusicological recordings using approaches from music analysis. We are particularly interested in our perception of notes, so we study ourselves as subjects. Not only does computer science provide the tools we use, but also we challenge the notion of a score as a single unambiguous ground truth in music information research. We'd like to say a huge thank you to the makers of the tools we use from the Centre for Digital Music at Queen Mary, University of London.